And I also have first-hand experience knowing what it's like to be harassed because of the color of your skin. All right, this is another true story, so why don't you sit down and listen up, okay? <laughs> I was living outside Detroit in a little town called San Francisco, California. <laughs> in a part of town called The Mission. If you don't know uh, The Mission, it's a, it's a part of the city where there's a lot of, of Mexican immigrants and a lot of Mexican gangs, and that's where I happen to live, and I'm not Mexican. Sorry, muchachos, and um, confused muchachos. But that's, that's how the story starts. And I was going home late one night, and I took the 14 bus, which we call the Comet, because it comes once every 78 years. <laughs> I got off the bus and there was a smell of evil in the air and a little bit of urine, okay? That's what the mission's like. You're in the mission, they have a whole song about it. But I think I've done enough songs for tonight. And it's, it's one thing to, to be in a, in a gang territory and see gang graffitis or even just one uh, graffiti. I don't know what the singular of that is. Graffiti, what is that? What is that? I don't know what it is. That's, that's one thing, but it's another thing to see an actual gang. Oh, these, these are the guys. This is their turf, and I'm in their area, right? But then it's another thing to, to have them touch you, which they did, on me. And it was kind of scary, because this gang of gangsters ganged up on me in the ganglion of the gangway. And they made a little gangplank, and I'm like, gangway, and I was out of there. <laughs> like some kind of busters. And... I haven't worked that one out yet. I didn't know if they were chasing me or not, and I, I was just scared. And like a ship lost at night, we'll look up and find a, a lighthouse to show them the way. I looked up and saw a tiny lighthouse called El Farolito. It means tiny lighthouse. It's a burrito place. They're open until two. So I downshift the metaphor to literal, and I pull in to the burrito place. And if you want a burrito in San Francisco, you might as well go to the Mission. You can go to other parts of town. You can go to the marina, but everything there is kind of yuppified. Even the names of the places, L.L. Bean Burrito Company. You can't get a, a real burrito there. You have to, no, you can't get a veggie burrito. You have to get the portobello burrito, which are these condescending mushrooms that are marinated in white wine and then sautéed and then reduced with black beans and goat cheese and fresh cilantro. And then it's pureed and put into a pastry bag and squirted into this organic hand-tossed whole wheat tortilla on top of the sun dry tomato white wine butter sauce on the sides of mixed baby green salad, roasted pine nuts, red pepper vinaigrette, and a blue corn polenta with a tequila lime chutney. Mm. Oh, nice. Delicioso, right? Just the way the Incas had their burritos. But I'm not there, I'm in El Fadolito, and I figure, well, since I'm here, I might as well get something neat. And, and I'm the palest guy there, and I'm, I'm so, and I'm scared white. I'm like, I'm like three shades paler than normal white. And what's one thing you never see in the mission? Cops, exactly. Yeah, but lo and behold, who shows up? Two cops, Officer Lo from Chinatown and Officer B. Holt from the Castro District. And they show up, and they said, what's going on? I said, thank God you guys are here. There's a gang, I think they're gonna kill me. And these cops were so nonchalant. There was no chalant at all. It was like, like the chalant delivery guy went on strike that day. And, and they said, was it, a, was it a Latin gang? And that kind of confused me because we're in a Mexican part of town where people are proud of their Mexican heritage. We're at a Mexican restaurant ordering Mexican food for Mexican chefs with Mexican flags, uh, Mexican tattooed on their Mexican arms, right? But um, we can't say Mexican because we have some kind of problem with racism. So rather than describe or explain a culture and what makes it different and interesting, unique, we're just gonna kind of cover that all up. So I'm sorry, if you're from Mexico, you're not Mexican, now you're Latin. And if you're from Guatemala, you're Latin. If you're from Argentina, welcome to the team. All right, it's... <laughs> it's, it's, it's race, uh, paint by number racism without without the colors or anything. It just doesn't make any sense. So we're not gonna celebrate what makes you interesting or unique. We're just gonna lump them all together. If you're brown, you get pigeonholed, you go into the Latin hole. And if you're red, you go into the engine hole, just like the old days. And if you're yellow, if, rather than make someone try to learn the difference between Chinese and Japanese and Koreanese and 
whatever the, the fourth one is, you go into the Asian hole, and if you're from the Anglo-Saxon society, like myself, you go into the ASS hole. So, Was it a Latin gang? I don't know, officer. They didn't speak Latin, okay? <laughs> Except for the fat one wearing a toga. <laughs> Caveat emptor, Holmes. <laughs> Carpe diem, cabron. <laughs> Et tu essay? <laughs> yeah, I don't like essay questions either. And I was thinking, why, why is there this racism in the most diverse state in the country? And it's true, I was watching the History Channel the other day, and sure, it's nothing but repeats, but I learned something <laughs> fascinating about California. The reason it's, it's so diverse is because they discovered gold 150 years ago, a little piece that much, and it attracted men from all over the world, and then they were followed by women who follow men who follow money, and that's pretty much how the West was won. Yeah. <laughs> First the prospectors came, and then the prostitutes came, and then everybody came. First the gold diggers, and then the gold diggers, okay? That's why when you look around California, you see all sorts of different kinds of people living side by side. You know, two guys holding hands, gay. Bleach haired bimbo with a boob job, actress slash model. Venice Beach weightlifter and a Humvee, governor. So, it's a nice... True story. 